Welcome to our example of finding reactions in a three-dimensional system. So what we have here is a bent bar. The bar goes from A, B to D. The bar actually carries a mass of 100 kilograms, which is the same as 981 newtons, and it's supported at D by a ball and socket. It's supported by a cable at B from B to C, and then it also has a journal bearing at A, and the problem description tells us that that journal bearing is properly aligned so that we're not going to get any moments. It's lined up in there, so we're only going to get reactions in the Z and Y direction. And I just noticed that that subscript on the AY was an X, so we just corrected that. Now, the problem here is asking us very specifically for to find just the tension in cable BC. Now here's the thing, you may be designing this and just needing to design what size cable do I need so that it can support the given load. And so there'd be no reason then to determine what the reactions are in the ball and socket or the journal bearing if you really just are looking to size that cable. And you're going to learn how to size members on in strength of materials, so this is a great example to say, hey, why solve for all the reactions? Let's be efficient. If our only goal is to size a cable, let's just find the reaction in the cable. And the problem is asking us to, hey, can we get the reaction in the cable with just one equation? So we want to see how to do that with this problem, and we're going to look at it both with vector analysis and with scalar analysis. And typically, something like this would be easier with vector analysis. So if we're going to solve this with vector analysis, we've got to kind of reflect back. All right, moments, we're taking forces times distance. And as long as you have a distance to something, you can have a moment about it. So we need to find a place to take moments about, a point or an axis, such that all the other reactions at A and D fall out, don't have a moment, so that the, t the tension in cable BC is the only unknown in our equation. Otherwise, we're going to have to use multiple equations. Now, it is really nice, looking at this problem, that we can see that we do only have six unknowns, right? We have AZ, AY, DX, DY, DZ, and the tension in B. So that's good because this is 3D equilibrium and so we get six equations and normally we could find all six using our six equations but again we're trying to find just the tension in B and we're trying to do it in just one equation. So if I were to sum moments at point A then there's a lot of components in D that are going to have moments about that point so it doesn't drop away. If I were to sum moments at point A, at B, I'm sorry, at point D, then the reactions at A are going to have moments about D. But we learned that you can also sum moments about an axis. And it doesn't have to be the coordinate axis, it can be any axis you create. So we could create a line, an axis, that goes from point A to D or D to A, and then if we sum moments about that axis, none of the reactions at A and D would have a moment because they all act through that axis. And so you can see we've already sketched in the dashed green line and that represents our axes from A to D. So our goal now is to just write an expression for summing moments about that axis. The only forces that are going to have moments about that axis will be the tension in cable BC and our applied mass or weight, um, depending on whether you want to talk about in kilograms or in newtons. So if we're going to do this, let's go ahead and look at what those particular vectors would look like. So we can draw a unit vector that's going to show our axes, and so we can call that lambda, and that's the unit vector for our axes. We're also going to have a position vector drawn in green, and another position vector drawn in green that go from our weight to back to D and from our cable back to D. Now the reason I chose to go back to D if again let's remember how we sum moments about an axis. You just need to have a position vector that goes from that axis, any point on that axis, to 
any point on our forces line of action. Our goal is to always pick the easiest points. Okay, so in this case, if we can just stay along the y-axis, which is what we've done, we just go from point D to point E along the y-axis, we've, we've followed the rules. We've gone from a point on axis AD, and we've gone to a point that hits the line of action of the weight applied at E, and so we have a really simple position vector. Same argument, we can just continue the position vector all the way back to point B where our cable intersects our bent bar, and again, we can get a position vector that goes from some point on axis AD back to our load. We could just have easily done all of this from point A. So we could have defined our lambda. We could have put our coordinate axis at point A. We could have defined our lambda going from A to D. And we could have had our position vectors going from A to B. But then our position vector from A to E would have been a little harder. It wouldn't have been impossible, but we wouldn't just be following the x-axis in that case, and we would have components in both the x and y direction. It's not a big deal. could easily do that. Okay, But we chose to put our coordinate axis at point D, kind of because it was there at the beginning of the problem. But remember, we can put it wherever we want, um, but we do want to put it somewhere on that AD axis once we start summing moments about axis AD. So we're definitely now going to want to look at writing what our vectors are going to be and so we do need to write out and we can start with the position vector or I'm sorry the unit vector for axes AD and that's just our lambda which is going to be the position vector AD over the magnitude of that vector now if you remember what we're really looking for as we write our position vector is we're looking for how far we have to move in the X direction the y direction and the z direction to go from D to point A. Look at how we've drawn our, our vector. You could say that this would just be vector a position vector at D minus position vector to A, but it, we're just going from D to A. And so we're going to move back a negative 1 meters in the x direction, we're going to move back a negative 1 meters in the y direction, and we don't move at all in the z direction. And then we do want to divide by the magnitude of that vector, which would just be the square root sum of the squares. So we'd have um, square root of 2. And so we could rewrite that as negative 1 over the square root of 2i minus negative 1 over the square root of 2j. We don't have a k value. Now we want to look at our, um, let's go ahead and look at the force vector and position vector for our applied 981 newtons. If you look at that 981 newtons, doesn't have an x component or y component, it's just hanging down and acting in the negative z. So we can easily just write that as a magnitude of negative 189 newtons acting in the with with k acting in the z direction with the um, unit vector k, and then we can look at our position vector. And our position vector, again, is going from D to E. So we have no movement in the X direction. We have no movement in the Z direction. And we go back negative 5 in the Y direction. So our position vector is just going to be negative 5 J. Now we want to look at the tension in cable BC. So we want to look at our reaction at B and we need the position vector to B. Now, our tension in BC obviously has X, Y, and Z components. And the nice thing is, is the drawing already gives us the geometry from B to C. So we know the X, Y, and Z part of the geometry, and if we can divide that by the hypotenuse, then we would actually be able to get the X, Y, and Z component of TB. So we can easily just write that all out. We know we're going to be going 0 0.2 in the x, negative 3 in the y, and 0 0.6 in the k. So we'll have negative 2i, negative 0.3j, and plus 0.6k. We multiply that all by the tension in B. And then we do want to divide that by the hypotenuse, which just would be the square root sum of the squares. 
And we can rewrite that then as 0.2 over 0.7 TBI plus, I'm sorry, or minus 0.3 over 0.7 TBJ and then plus 0.6 over 0.7 times the tension in B, K. And once we have that vector, force vector, written out, we just need the position vector for this. And much like our position vector to point E, all we have to do is move back in the negative 1 negative one in the y direction and it looks like we lost our title on that so we're gonna go ahead and put that back in and this is just gonna be the position vector oops, r from we wanna write that as where are we going we're going from b back to d and it looks like we actually have an error too and have written out this vector and this should be not from B to E but from D to E. So we can go ahead and erase that and give that the proper whoops we're gonna erase that all right, now our vector labels, our position vector labels are correct, and we're going to look now at basically summing our moments. And so we are looking to sum moments about the axes AD, and so that is going to be lambda dot product of R cross F is how we sum about an axis, and we're really going to have lambda, the dot product of the unit vector from B to E. Again, that's labeled incorrectly. That's unit vector ED to the force vector for the load plus the unit vector from BDD um, plus time, cross, cross product with the tension in the cable. And so what that's really going to look like as we move through this is let's look at each part of that bit by bit. And so we can actually write out the whole expression. So we can write each component. So we'd have our negative 1 over radical 2, negative 1 over radical 2 and 0. We're going to have our just 0.5 in the J and our negative 981 newtons in the K for the third row. And if we multiply that out, doing our dot product and cross product, we're just going to have negative 1 half or negative 1 over the radical 2, negative 0.5, and negative 981. And then we're going to add to that the cross product, or the dot product of the cross product. And so on our top row, we'd still just have our negative 1 over radical 2, negative 1 over radical 2, and 0. This time in the second row would be minus 1 in the J position. And then we're going to put in our components for TB that we already found, our X, Y, and Z. And if we multiply that all out, we're just going to get, again, negative 1 over radical 2. We're going to get negative 1, and then we're going to get times are six sevenths of TB. And now we can directly solve for TB. It's the only unknown. And we get from one equation that the tension in cable BC is 572 newtons. And so what we've been able to do just using um, taking moments about an axis, we've been able to find the reaction through one equation. And I hope what you noticed, the key thing was, is that we had to draw a line to connect two of our support reactions so that all of their components acted through that axis so they didn't have a moment. So it only left us with one unknown that didn't have a moment about that axis. Check out the next video for the solution to this problem as a scalar.